For this project, I'm going to show you how to make a hot wire styro slicer that cuts styrofoam shapes with precision and control. It'll produce professional looking 3D props for cosplay or metal casting, as well as make foam fighter jets that actually fly across the room. The styro slicer has adjustable power settings, cuts at any angle you need, and the best part is the whole system fits together ergonomically for easy and clutter free storage. Let's start this project with a simple experiment using a 6 volt lantern battery and a thin piece of hanger wire. If we wrap the ends of the wire around the battery terminals, you can see it gets incredibly hot in just an instant. In fact, it's so hot that if we try touching it to a small piece of styrofoam, it slices right through like a hot knife on butter. That's the basic concept of how our hot wire foam cutter is going to work, so let's get started building the foam factory with some 3 quarter inch PVC tubing and a few connectors. These pieces will create the frame for our multifunctional wire saw, and you should be able to find all of them easily at any home improvement store in the sprinkler aisle. Cut two pieces of tubing 11 inches long and one other piece 12 inches, and the only fittings you're going to need are two 90 degree elbows and two slip caps. Now if you're planning to customize the colors on your styro slicer, go ahead and paint the elbows and slip caps now because it'll save you a step later on. The next things we'll be needing are some number 8 flat washers and two number 8 eye bolts around 1 and 5 eighths of an inch long. Place one of the washers on the bolt and screw them both firmly into the center of the cap. I pre-drilled my hole using a 532 inch drill bit and it really couldn't have worked out better. Now continue screwing the eye bolt into the cap until it's tight against the outside washer, then do the exact same thing with the other one. The next step is to make a hole in the center of the 12 inch pipe, so mark the tubing 6 inches from the end and begin drilling. We only want a hole in one side though, so when the drill bit punches through the top, it's time to stop. I drilled my hole 3 eighths of an inch wide, but you can really make yours any size you want, as long as you can get an electric cord to fit through it. And speaking of cords, we're going to need one of those next. All we're really after here is the cord itself, so go ahead and chop off whatever's on the ends, then separate the two wires by carefully pulling them apart. I split my cord into strands about 2 feet long, which is actually a bit more than we need, but it gives us a little wiggle room for when we attach it in just a second. Next, we'll need to expose the bare copper wire inside, so use wire strippers to remove about an inch of the plastic coating from the ends. Then twist the strands tightly together and bend it over, so you can twist it together at the bottom and form a little metal loop. Carefully push the split wires through the hole in the tubing, and continue working them in until the wires snake around the corners and pop out the other ends. Now if you can figure out how to tie a knot on the inside, the cable won't be able to pull back out accidentally, and it'll prevent the wires from splitting down any further. So tie it off if you can figure out how to do it, otherwise don't worry too much about it. All that's left to do now is push the individual wires through the two remaining tubes and secure them to the end caps. Add a washer to the bolt inside the cap, then slip the wire loop over the end of the bolt and push it down to the bottom. Add one more washer and a hex nut, then use something like a pair of needle nose pliers to help tighten the whole assembly together. Now simply push the end caps on the tubes as tightly as you can, and just like that, the frame for your wire saw is finished. You could use it just like this, but if you want to kick it up a notch, try using a bit of duct tape to add a splash of color. The only thing our hot wire foam cutter needs now is the hot wire, and for that I'll be using a 1.5 inch extension spring and some stainless steel hanger wire which you'll find in the hardware aisle. I got a 9 foot roll for a little under $4, which is way more than I'll ever need and should last forever. Measure the wire so it's a couple inches longer than the frame, then go ahead and snip it to size, and now here's the cool part. If you look closely, you'll notice the hanger wire is made of seven smaller wires twisted together. So if we unravel them, we end up with seven super thin stainless steel cutting wires, and plenty more where they came from. At this point, go ahead and get the one and a half inch extension spring ready by connecting it to one of the eye bolts. The easiest way to connect it is by pulling the hook open with a pair of pliers, then looping it inside the bolt and letting go. Fasten one end of the steel wire to the bottom eye bolt by folding the wire back over itself and twisting it around a few times. Now loop the other end through the bottom of the spring, but before you twist it off, pull the wire firmly and stretch it out first. This will spring load the wire with tension, which is really important for keeping it tight when it expands and contracts rapidly. With that final step, the wire cutter is done, except you might have noticed the wire is still a bit wavy. Simply take a screw or the handle of a spoon and slide it back and forth a few times to make the ripples disappear. Now let's do a quick and simple test to make sure everything got connected properly by touching the ends of the wires to the terminals of the lantern battery. If you did it right and your connections are solid, the wire will heat up and slice through styrofoam without any trouble at all. Ok now that we've got a wire cutting blade, let's go ahead and build the foam cutting factory I designed to go with it. The first thing you're going to need is half inch medium density fiberboard cut 18 inches square. We'll also need an 8 foot 2x4 which you can get for about $2. 
I'm using a chop saw to make quick and clean cuts, but you can use whatever tools work best for you. But in any case, you'll need to cut the first piece 18 inches long, then a 15 inch piece for the side, another 15 inch piece for the bottom, followed by an 11 and half inch piece for the other side. A 5 inch block fills the gap above that, followed by a 3 and half inch block on the bottom left, then another 3 and half inch block that'll go inside on the bottom right a little later on. Now that our 2x4 is cut, mark a 10 inch line down the center of the MDF square and use something like a chop saw to follow the line from the center of the marking right out the side. You'll see what this groove is for a little later on. Alright, it's time to secure the blocks together and for that I'm using 8 3 inch wood screws and an 8 inch drill bit. Start by lining all the blocks in position on the bottom of the board, then use the 8 inch bit to drill pilot holes in the wood. This way the wood won't crack when you screw it together. The blocks go together in three different segments, and you should be able to figure out how to attach them by studying how I did mine. Before we go any further, it's a good idea to stop and hack a square hole out of the 15-inch sidewall to accommodate the dimmer switch we'll be adding in just a minute. I used a 3 8 inch bit to drill holes in the corners, then connected the dots with a jigsaw to cut the sides and pop the block out. If you did it right, your hole will be on the left side of the base when the 18-inch board is facing forward. Okay, let's move on to securing the work surface next. We'll need to drill pilot holes through the MDF like we did for the base frame, and it's a good idea to invest in a countersink bit so you can get the heads of the screws to drop below the surface. I used 10 one and a half inch wood screws to hold the board to the 2x4s and two 3 inch wood screws in the upper right area to secure the 3 and a half inch reinforcing block to the underside of the table. These are the measurements I used and it's important you take time to measure and fasten yours the same way because it's all part of a master plan that'll come together later on. Now just for fun, I thought it would be a good idea to use my flush mount router station to quickly clean up the edges a bit by rounding them out. For just a little extra effort, you can see what an amazing difference it makes, and all I used was a half inch rounding bit. If you want to see how I made this router station, look for how to build it in another project video. Alright, let's make sure all the wood pieces fit together snugly on the underside, then double check the base support assembly didn't get screwed on. That's important. We still have one thing left to do with the base support, and that's to drill a 3 8 inch hole directly in the center and 5 inches from the bottom. Now just for looks, I decided to spray paint mine black so it would match my wire saw better, but however you color yours is completely up to you. The next step in assembling our foam cutting factory is attaching the arm assembly to the support base. Stand the saw upright so it looks like the letter C, and center it in the middle of the board. Now if you push a pen through the hole in the back and mark the tubing, you can use your 3 8 inch drill bit to carefully cut a matching hole right through the tube. Make sure you don't cut the wires inside, and put something like a scrap piece of wood underneath so you don't scratch up your table when the drill finally punches through. Let's fasten the two parts together next using a 3 8 inch by 3 and a half inch hex bolt, two 5 16 inch cut washers, a 3 8 inch wing nut, and two 5 16 inch tank bolt washers which you'll find in the plumbing section. The bolt and one washer go on the forward side of the tubing, while the two tank washers go on the back. And after inserting the bolt all the way through the hole in the support stand, add one more washer and a wing nut to clamp the system together. The wing nut simply needs to be screwed on hand tight, and with that final addition, you've just completed a standalone cutting assembly that looks awesome and has a lot of really cool features. The cutting arm is designed to pivot on the bolt so you can adjust the angle of the blade any way you need it. If that's not enough, you can release the wing nut and slide the whole assembly out to cut larger blocks free-handed. Now to bring our styro slicer to life, we just need a way to safely electrify it and control the power. So let's finish up with the electrical system next. I went to the hardware store and got a 600 watt dimmer switch that you can turn on or off just by pushing it. We're also going to need a 12 volt power transformer, a 10 amp fuse, and another 6 foot length of cord. Now if you have trouble finding a transformer or simply don't want to shell out for one, you'll probably be able to salvage one for free by hacking open an old stereo and pulling one off the power supply. That's what I did for my first prototype and it works just as well. The dimmer switch goes in position from the outside and gets secured into place with two 1 inch wood screws. You'll need a cover plate as well to make it look nice and with that screwed on, replace the knob then flip the whole workstation over. I decided to install my transformer about halfway down the side, and use two more 1 inch screws to secure it as tightly against the top as I could get it, and it helps if you position the side with the three wires facing down. The 10 amp fuse isn't really necessary, but it's good practice to have in place just in case of a short, so make sure it's actually got a fuse inside, then go ahead and connect everything together using the small wire nuts that came with the dimmer switch. Now to save time, I went ahead and just wired everything together, and after you do the same, it should look something like this. You can see the main power cord comes in from the outlet and connects to the 10 amp fuse first, which then connects to the black wire on the dimmer switch next. The red wire coming out of the dimmer switch connects to the black cord on the primary side of the transformer, and the other black cord connects to the wire running back to the outlet. Now on the secondary side of the transformer you might have noticed two yellow wires and one black one. 
The two yellow wires supply 12 volts and the black wire is center tapped for half power. This means that connecting them to a three position switch will give us the option to cycle the system between 0 volts, 6 volts and 12 volts on demand. Now it doesn't really matter which yellow wire you connect to the switch as long as it's soldered to one side with the black wire soldered to the other. The remaining yellow wire needs to be connected to the cord running to the hot wire assembly and the return wire connects back to the middle of the three position switch. It sounds complicated but it's really not that bad once you get into it. Now the two power cords are designed to feed out the back so they don't get in the way. One cord is for the supply power that gets plugged into any regular outlet and the other cord runs the regulated power to the cutter assembly. At this point the styro slicer is done and ready to use as soon as you are. Simply push the cutting arm into place with the wire in the center of the work surface, then flip the red switch to the 6 volt setting which I call normal power. Push the dimmer switch on, then gently crank up the power and you're in business. If everything's working the way it should, your wire will instantly heat up and you can start slicing through styrofoam right away, making some of the smoothest and cleanest cuts you can imagine. For one final touch, I added a couple 1 inch screws to the inside of the base so we can store the rest of the hanger wire, then secured a latch on the upper side of the support stand so the whole system locks together for quick and easy storage. By the way, there's also a backup battery cable in there that'll connect the system to solar or battery power, which makes the whole system portable and off the grid. Well now you know how to rise up and become a master styrofoam maker by building yourself a homemade styro slicer that gives you precision control for cutting custom props like a mini master sword or slicing out something more intricate like a squadron of 3D fighter jets. Look for how to make these in another video. Well that's it for now. If you like this project, perhaps you'll like some of my others. Check them out at thekingofrandom.com. Hey guys, thanks for watching to the end. I love the Styro Slicer, and if you build one yourself, I'm confident you're gonna love yours as well. This project was sponsored by Audible.com, which is an Amazon company sporting the world's largest selection of premium audiobooks. Audible promotes learning and progression through the spoken word, and they have over 180,000 different titles, so you're gonna come across a lot of different books you really like. Try downloading an audiobook to your iPhone, iPad, Kindle, MP3 player, computer, or whatever else you use to play MP3s, and you'll instantly have a professional voice talent reading your favorite stories to you. That means that rather than being bored on your daily commutes to work, you can study the seven habits of highly effective people instead, or follow a fictional astronaut stranded on Mars and discover how he uses science to hack his way safely back to Earth. With Audible's Great Listen Guarantee, you can easily exchange a book you're not happy with for a different title anytime you want with no questions asked. There's no shipping and no waiting, so you'll be listening to books like Star Wars The Force Awakens in as little as 5 minutes. Try Audible with a 30-day free trial and download your first audiobook for free right now at audible.com slash thekingofrandom. And please make sure you use audible.com slash thekingofrandom because it lets them know you came from my video and that helps a lot. Thanks again for supporting and sharing my projects, and I'll see you in the next project video. Talk to you then.